All right. Hello, everybody. And I would say I hope you had a great 2018. I'm not talking about the market. I'm just talking about your lives. I hope you're healthy and happy. Uh, and I hope you're healthier and happier next year as well. So we are going to give a brief demonstration of the upgrades to Trade Machine, which will naturally encapsulate all of the functionality. Uh, it's a pretty remarkable upgrade in the sense that it's just going to make all of our 2019s a lot better. I think you'll see that pretty quickly. Um, please use the Q&A button after we do our little demo so we can answer all of your questions. That's what we're here for. Try not to use the chat because chat gets messy and we have no idea who's asking what and it just gets kind of crazy. Uh, before I start, by the way, I'm talking slowly because people are joining as I speak, so I'm be trying to be deliberate. Um, before I start, I'll just hand it off to Jason for a second. Jason is our CTO and, most importantly, the sole creator, sole coder, no one else's hands are allowed on it, for a trade machine. I get to do the scans a little bit, but that doesn't really count. Um, Jason also, for those of you that don't know, I know some of you do know, uh, I'll give you a little uh, tidbit. I don't know if you knew this, but uh, real-time quotes that is in a database used to be uh, a really big deal. In fact, people couldn't do it. They were just updating APIs in real time. And getting them into a database was basically impossible, and the only people able to do it were kind of fake doing it at like Goldman Sachs, and that's how they're making a lot of money, uh, front-running trades. That's why Goldman Sachs earnings have kind of gone down for a while. So only two people in the world figured out how to do it in around 2007, and Jason was one of them. And he did it for a company named Live All. That's where we met, which later sold to Sibo. So not only is Jason the uh, sole coder and creator of Trade Machine, he's also a financial technology celebrity. And then with that, I give it off to Jason. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for the kind words, though. I'm sure I'd go for celebrity, but I uh, appreciate the flattery. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm Jason, as Ophir mentioned. Um, I want to tell you uh, a little bit about Ophir. I know a lot of you know him, uh, but it's great to know his background. A lot of people follow him on Twitter or see him on some of the TV spots he does, but uh, it's always good to go over, just kind of know, you know, when someone's building a product, you want to know, you know, who they are, what their background is. So, um, He'll be giving the demonstration and then answering a bunch of questions. We have a bunch of cool new features we will show everyone and answer all the questions that are flooding in. But first, uh, let me give you a, a little reminder about his background in case you don't already know. Um, as he mentioned, uh, Ophir is, of course, the CEO of our company, Capital Market Laboratories. We call it CML. And we're a member of Thompson First Call. And our goal is pretty simple. We want to empower every trader to have the same tools and information available to them as are available to the top 0.1%. So Ophir has an impressive background, and that started, of course, a long time before CML. Uh, you probably know but may not know that he spent a good amount of time on the floor trading options on the NYC ARCA and SIBO. Um, what really stands out to me most about Ophir is that in addition to that kind of real world floor trading experience, he also has a financial mathematics and machine learning background uh, from graduate work at Stanford. And if you've spent time on the SIBO floor in those kind of places, uh, a lot of the guys, that's definitely not their background. They're much more just, you know, get in there and hash it out kind of guys. Um, when he was at Stanford, he authored a bunch of papers in the realm of quantitative finance, um, which if you want to melt your brain, you should definitely read. Um, before he founded CML, in addition to the floor trading experience, he worked on the institutional side. He was the managing director of algorithmic trading at LiveAll, which is where we met. Um, I was heading the engineering effort there uh, before that company was acquired by SIBO. Then after LiveAll, Ophir worked as the managing director of quantitative research at GMI, which was acquired by MSCI, which is uh, Morgan Stanley Capital Investments. Uh, when he was at GMI, Ophir created and ran all of the firm's machine learning quant models. And if you add up all of the clients using his models, there was more than a trillion dollars with a T in assets that were being governed by his work. 
Um, so it's pretty pretty big stuff. So you know, pretty clearly, Ophir has has put in some time helping the top echelon of our society make a lot of money, and that's great. Um, but after the sale of GMI uh, and kind of reflecting on his his work and his background and his time in the financial markets, uh, Ophir just came to realize that that wasn't tenable for him anymore. You know, there's just a lot of people out in the world other than the top you know top of these organizations and people putting money into them. And that's what uh, that was the impetus for creating Capital Market Laboratories. Uh, that's the vision that that he brought to me that that had me stop what I was doing and join his his founding team, um, just to make information and tools available to everyday investors, just to improve the quality of their lives. And uh, that's why we've been building the tools that we have for the last few years, and that's why we're reaching out, you know, on webinars like these and uh, trying to keep the prices of these tools uh, at at price points that. Uh, everyday investors can can afford. Uh, so that's us. Um, with no further ado, I'll turn it over to Ophir, and we'll we'll get into the good stuff. Cool. Uh, thanks, Jay. Thanks for the uh, wonderful introduction. Uh, I am going to start off <clears throat> with a little video, which by now our members are used to. Don't worry, it's a new video. Um, <clears throat> and after that. I'm going to, sorry, I hope it doesn't start yet. <laughs> After that, uh, we're going to just pull it back and start really diving deep into Trade Machine, the additional features, and then asking questions, which I think is probably going to be the most important part because uh, questions tend to focus Jason and I on you know what we're talking about on this webinar and what, what to focus on in the future. So I'm going to try something a little odd here. There's a setting on this webinar which says uh, optimize screen share for full screen video. I tried that and it was really bad. It was really blurry, but I'm gonna try it again because this is a full screen video. Uh, and I'm just gonna play like five seconds. I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna ask you guys if my screen got blurrier or sharper, okay? And then based on that, <laughs> we'll continue. So I'll hold on one second. I'm gonna try and make this um, work as well as possible for everyone. Okay. That didn't work. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, let's see if I can get it up again. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit play. Don't worry if it doesn't look good. You guys just tell me if it looks clear, okay. Answers, that's what this is about. If momentum trading actually works, then there must be verifiable entry and exit rules. Okay, did that look clear or was that less clear than what my screen looked like just a second ago? I think we're good, huh? Okay, all right, and you heard the audio, I guess? Yeah, sure did. Okay, all right, guys. This is a brief video, and afterwards, we're getting to the uh, we're going to get into the the good stuff. All right, here we go. Answers. That's what this is about. If momentum trading actually works, then there must be verifiable entry and exit rules. There must be a technical indicator safety valve that learns to avoid the trade when the market changes direction, and the results must be empirical and explicit. And that's it. If non-directional option trading works. Then again, there must be verifiable entry and exit rules. There must be a technical safety valve which learns to avoid a stagnating market, and the results must be empirical and explicit. The same goes for technical stock trading. There must be verifiable entry and exit rules, and the results must be empirical and explicit. And that's it. Answers. That's what we're about to see, and we're going to do it right now. We'll start with momentum trading. By now, the rest of the world has picked up on our published research that there has been in the last 10 years during the bull market pre-earnings optimism, in particular in technology companies. We're talking about this period right before earnings. We're not talking about what happens after earnings. That has turned out to be a bit of a coin flip, but there has tended to be pre-earnings optimism a week or 14 days before earnings, where owning calls and then selling them before the earnings event has been a fantastically good trade. Let's just take a look at how good it has been. We'll look over the last 10 years. We'll look at Microsoft, Google, and Amazon. We'll look at buying a call, we will do it with custom earnings timing. That is, we will open the position seven days before earnings and we'll close it the day of earnings. Since all three of these companies report after the market closes, this trade does not take an earnings bet. If these stocks reported before the market closed, then we would have to put a one here. And here are these fantastic results. 
We can see across the board from Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, just staggering results. 340% to 497%. The win rates are all above 60%. But there's a fair criticism which says, sure, if we could guarantee that we would be in a bull market tomorrow, then we could put this trade on today. But we cannot guarantee if we're in a bull or bear market. And the end of 2018 has been a perfect example of how quickly things can turn. So let's take this exact same test and let's just look at what happened over the last six months. And what do you know? All three of these have now turned into losers. Google and Amazon in particular have been monstrous losers on just two trades. So does that mean this pre-earnings optimism that we talked about before, does that optimism no longer occur? Or if it does, how do we know when it's going to occur? We're going to apply a technical trigger. And while in technical analysis, you will find thousands of filters, we take a step back at Capital Market Laboratories and looked at the single most used technical trigger, and that is the moving average. We will go down to a technical open rather than normal time. And all we're going to do is enter this trade seven days before earnings if and only if the stock price is above the 50-day moving average. That's it. You can see all of the other settings we have here. We're not going to get twisted up and trying to combine 19 different measures to figure out a perfect technical strategy. We are going to do the same trade, but only if the stock price is above the 50-day moving average. For those of us that are more visually inclined, this is exactly what we're doing. We're waiting for the seven days before earnings. That's the screen E icon. We're checking to see if the stock price is above the black line. The black line is the 50-day moving average. Since it is, that triggers an entry and that is the momentum we seek. We fast forward one earnings session and again, we look at seven days before earnings, but now the stock price is below the 50 day moving average. It's below that black line. And so no trade is taken. That is our safety valve. And here are the results now. Even over the last six months, you'll notice that one of the earnings was skipped. You'll see each of these stocks only have one trade, even though there have been two earnings in the last six months. And which trade was skipped? We can just click on a back test tile. We can see the only trade place, for example, Microsoft was in summer. Same thing with Amazon, the one that was in summer. And you'll find the same thing with Google. We applied a simple rule. And now we can compare these last six months using the technical indicator without the technical indicator. And here they are side by side. We know there are a lot of numbers. Look at the difference that just eliminating one trade has had. But now let's look at the impact of this little filter over the last 10 years. That is, what if we used this technical open right here, that is trade the one week before earnings, if and only if the stock is above the 50 day moving average, but let's do it for the last 10 years. And here are those results. And since we're dealing with a lot of numbers here, here we include the results without the technical trigger. To make things easier to read, we'll just show the total return of the back tests and the win rates. First we found the pattern and then we found the safety valve. Using the simplest of technical opens, we have seen higher returns using just one of the phenomena that we have identified that exist in the market during both a bull and bear market. Of course, there's no reason to only look at one week before earnings. We can also try looking at short-term momentum trades, that is just three days before earnings and looking for that pre-earnings momentum. And in this case, we'll look at Tesla and Nvidia. And here are the results over the last year for those two stocks. You see both of them have four wins and no losses, totaling over 500% or 200% on just four trades each. It turns out that we can also look at the 14 days before earnings for this pre-earnings momentum. So we have three days, seven days, and even 14 days. And how do we find all these ideas? How do we know which stocks are working the best? That goes to the Pro Scanner. We'll click on Pro Scan. We'll select by strategy. We will choose a ticker group of the NASDAQ 100. And you can see there are so many scans that we have for idea generation. But in this case, we're focused on the pre-earnings scans and we're looking at pre-earnings optimism. So we have the seven days, 14 days, and three days pre-earnings optimism calls. We can even tap on the three days and look at those results. You can sort by the number of wins, by the win rate, by the average trade return. You can even sort by the length of the back test. But if we scroll down, we can see even more. Not only do we have the three day, seven day, and 14 day pre-earnings long call, we also have the three day, seven day, and 14 day pre-earnings long call 
with the technical requirement imposed on it. That is, those trades are back tested and scanned if and only if the stock price is above the 50 day moving average. So you can see even for the single type of trade, we have six different scans to find the best of breed. While we're here, you notice that we also have pre-earnings volatility plays. That is four days, 14 days, and seven days before earnings, looking to own a straddle just to capture that rise in volatility and then closing it the day before. You can always just tap on a ticker in the scanner and it will bring up the backtest tile and show you those results in the backtest tab where you can customize it further. And finally, no backtest is complete without setting the alert. So I go to the alerts tab. I wanna do Nvidia and Tesla. I enter them common delimited. This is a days before earnings alert, three days before earnings. I'll put in my email address and my phone number and I'll add the alert. And there it is. I will get alerted three days before earnings for Nvidia and for Tesla automatically via text message and email. So we have found the answers that we sought for momentum trading. We found a verifiable entry and exit rule. It was absolutely structured and methodical. We found the technical indicator safety valve that learned to avoid the trade if a bear market or a correction was starting. And finally, the results were empirical and explicit through a bull market and a bear market. And now we'll turn to non-directional option trading. It can be shown that just blindly owning calls and puts, that is straddles or strangles, is simply a losing strategy. I mean, how wonderful would option trading be if you could just buy calls and puts every two weeks and make money? But you can't, and we can actually show that. Let's look at the period from 2015, September 30th, through 2018, September 30th, and simply get long a strangle, doing nothing special with earnings, and doing it every 14 days in Amazon, Adobe, and Facebook. And here are the results. Even in a raging bull market, this strategy has been a complete disaster. But here's the secret, and you can only get to it if you do empirical and methodical research. There are specific times when just owning calls and puts together and betting on option volatility is a good trade and avoids all of the risk of a bear market or any directional bias. But it must be extremely selective and when done properly, the results are staggering. There should be a way for us to make this become a profitable strategy with extremely high win rates without taking stock direction bet. And there is, we just need four steps. The first thing we wanna do is skip earnings. The next thing we want to do is go to a technical open and we only want to open this strangle or straddle only at the moment that the stock price crosses down through the 200 day moving average. And when that happens, the stock price is also below the 10 day moving average. We're not going to use a bunch of fancy combinations. We're simply using moving averages. Next, we will come down to our close trade one section. We're gonna to wanna to take gains if this strangle ever goes up 20%. Let's close this trade no matter what at a maximum of 10 days after we open it. And here are the results over the last three years. We see all wins and no losses with huge returns taking no stock direction risk whatsoever. We can even look at the bear market that occurred at the end of 2018. We'll look at the three months from October 2018 to the end of 2018. We can see even in that three month period, this trade only triggered twice in Amazon, yielding 96%, and triggered once in Adobe, yielding 60% on one trade. It never occurred in Facebook, but we can expand our universe and add Netflix and Apple and look over the last 10 years. Look what we're finding with this technical entry. Nine wins and one loss for Amazon. In Adobe, this trade only occurred nine times. Facebook, it only occurred six times. Netflix and Apple, similarly. And look at the returns, ranging from 145% to 481% through a bull market and a bear market, taking no stock direction risk at all. Of course, we can always click on a back test tile to see the details. Here's Adobe and it's nine trades with seven wins and two losses. We can see the average trade return was 32% over a maximum of 10 days. But look at the details. The average win was 46% while the average loss was just 16%. So we have a very high win rate where the average trade win is substantially larger than the average trade loss because this trade takes no stock direction risk. We turned a strategy which has been shown to be a loser. That is just owning calls and puts and hoping that stocks will move. We added a few rules with backtesting and structured technical rules to trigger and open and found magnificent results that work during a bull market and a bear market and when all of it is put together.
And where do we find historically the best candidates for this volatility trade with a technical trigger? It's under the Pro Scanner. So we'll click Pro Scan. We go by strategy. We can choose any ticker group we like. In this case, we'll just choose the NASDAQ 100. And here we go for the never trade earnings scans that we have. And we're looking at the technical long strangles. And you'll get all of the results and you can sort them by the number of wins or the win rate, by the average trade return, the total back test return. And you can sort by different back test lengths and finally, we can go to the alerts tab and set an alert for the stock price going below the 200 day moving average. Now let's try to use some technical analysis to find a strategy which identifies stocks as they're rising so it works well in a bull market, but it also has settings such that when a bear market comes or even when a correction comes, no stock trades happen. That is the trigger is smart enough to not fire. We'll try this with a special technical open. First, we're gonna wait for the stock to cross up through the 10-day moving average. That's a lot of momentum. We also wanna make sure that the 50-day moving average is above the 200-day moving average and the 21-day moving average is above the 50-day moving average. We call this stacked moving averages. Finally, even though this is a bullish momentum setup, we don't want the stock to be overbought. So we're gonna say the RSI has to be below 70. And here are the results over the last 10 years. Look at the win rates. 19 wins and three losses for Google, 21 wins and eight losses for Amazon, Amazon all the way through to Netflix with 21 wins and five losses. But this is during a bull market. So if this strategy is doing what it should be doing, if we look at the bear market at the end of 2018, we should either see winning trades or no trades at all. We'll go to settings and we'll set it up for the end of 2018. Here we go. And now we see that we're getting a message that says the strategy did not result any trades being placed. If we close that window, we'll see that only one trade was placed with these four stocks, Google, Amazon, Nvidia, and Netflix. It was Google. It was a winning trade. It actually went up 48.7%. But more importantly, during this bear market, the technical trigger simply didn't fire. We avoided the bear market. So far, this is working perfectly. Let's extend the time frame and go to one year. Now that we step back to one year, we see each of them are showing positive returns. But even more importantly, let's see how this technical trigger did relative to just buying and holding the stock. We'll click on a backtest tile. This technical trigger returned 64%, while Google was up 49.5%, meaning it outperformed the stock and traded many fewer days. There was much less risk in this strategy. We can now walk down to Amazon. Amazon was up 23.2% in the last year. This strategy was up 35.7%, and again, much less risk. We can now go to NVIDIA. 2018 was a terrible year for NVIDIA when it came down to it. The stock was down 33%, but this technical strategy was actually up 16%. So now we've shown that it works during a bull market over 10 years, a bear market over those last three months in 2018, and that this strategy can outperform the stock when the market's going up and down. While we're at it, we might as well test this stock strategy as an option strategy. What if we just bought a call during these times as opposed to buying the stock? So we'll get long a call. We'll go down to the close trade when and make sure we close our trade with a 40% limit. And here are the results over the last 10 years. All of a sudden we see returns from 182% to 641% and look at those win rates. Not a single one is below 60%. And if we go back to the six month period from June 2018 to the end of 2018, we see positive returns other than Netflix and all of the positive returns are larger than the loss of Netflix, meaning this technical setup as an option strategy also works, which is to say it tends to avoid bad trades, that is trades when the market's going down, and jump in on trades when the market's going up. Now it's time for a little bit of a wow factor for our final and most compelling example of how important it is to understand when you're in a bull market or a bear market by using technicals. That is a structured rule to let you know. We'll look at the famous back test the Capital Market Laboratories published for the SPY. It's a four-legged custom strategy, which is created by clicking the custom strategy button. It has four legs and we won't go over it now, but suffice it to say, we have a full dossier which walks this trade step by step so that every single leg makes sense. And this trade does have limited risk. It's totally a covered trade. What we showed was this incredible trade over 10 years that had an 880% return with 113 wins and 11 losses. What could be more fantastic? Well, here's the problem. Over the last year, this trade has started to fall apart. And if we go to the last year, this is for all of 2018 this trade is negative 97%. The problem with this trade is not the construct. The problem with this trade was unable to identify when the market had turned bearish. In fact, even if we looked over the last two years now, given how bad 2018 was, this trade is still vastly negative, even though it has 22 wins and three losses. Here's where the wow factor comes in. We're gonna go down to a technical open. We're gonna only do this trade if the SPY is above its 50-day moving average, if the 50-day moving average is above the 200-day moving average, and the 10 and 21-day moving averages are stacked. 
So we're essentially forcing a technical condition where we know it's not a bear market. And look what happens to that 54% loss. It turns into a 219% win with 17 wins and one loss. Here they are side by side. It's easy to miss, but remember, this is the exact same trade. We simply put a technical trigger or a safety valve, which made us avoid the bad ones. That's all that has changed. We have avoided the bad trades and we've gone from a 50% loser to a 220% winner, even during a bear market. That's the difference between having a technical indicator, which is a structured rule, which tells you exactly when to avoid a trade and when to enter it. And if we look over the last year, we can see that there are six wins and no losses using the technical indicator as a safety valve. But when we go back to taking off the technical indicator, that 85% gain goes to a 97% loss. That's the power to having technical safety valves in your trades. We set out to answer three questions. We showed one way in which momentum trading works and when it works. We showed one way in which non-directional option trading works and when it works. And finally, we showed when technical stock trading works and how it works. And for each of these, we showed verifiable entry and exit rules. And finally, we had technical indicator safety valves that had us not trading at bad times but trading at times that were ideal for those strategies. We were empirical and explicit, and we hope that you were better for it. Of course, there are so many other strategies that can be tested, and among those strategies, you'll find your favorites for a diversified option portfolio that works during a bull market, a bear market, and in a chop market. And we cover every stock and every ETF and every index in North America. We were empirical, and we were explicit, and we did answer the questions that we set out to. Thank you for watching. We hope you're the better for it. All right, let me get rid of this. Let me change my screen view so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Real quick, hold on, I'll make it clear. If you're not, uh, okay. All right, uh, the screen look clear to everyone? Yep, good for me. Okay, cool. All right, so before I get, I'm gonna open a new window here. Before I do any more demonstrations of strategies, I just want to fully, um, that's weird. I just want to f uh, f fully, oh my goodness. Okay. All right. I just want to fully show the features. Um, this is less, less about benefits, less more about features. So let me just, yeah. So let's just say we wanted to recreate that, um, that cool, uh, strangle trade in Apple. That is like the market's going down. We can tell the market's going down. We have a structured rule that it is going down, but we don't want to lose our money. So we want to do this um, strangle trade, right? So you do Apple, get longer strangle, never trade earnings. And then the technical open is here. So this is what the new, um, one of the new features we have is it's this technical open. This is, it opens this dialog box. Everything is off until you turn it on. So you see that, right? Uh, I think this one was the stock had to cross through the 200-day moving average. Is that true? Maybe it was a 50-day moving average. Um, and that's it. So whichever technical indicator you want, you turn off and on. There are drop-down menus. So you could say crosses up through. In this case, we wanted crosses down through. Here are the moving averages. And you can do whatever you want. You can even go down to RSI. You can have as many of these on or off as you want, or you can have none of them on. But these are how we will add or how we have added it, and we'll continue to add safety valves. There are also ways to measure a momentum, which we showed in that um, third third trade, which was when our stock's about to rise. We can do the same thing when our stock's about to go down. In fact, if you take that strategy we showed and literally just reverse it, change crosses up through to crosses down through, and cha change above to below, and change it to puts instead of calls, you'll have yourself a, a bearish strategy as well. So that's how all of this works. One other thing we added for Trade Machine members, We've, for a long time, people have been saying, hey, I want to test like owning a 30-day option, but I want to sell it after 15 days. So we've added that. So you can now close your trades after a certain number of days. In this case, we'll close it after 10 days. We're using 14-day options. So we don't want to have total theta decay in this. If, if it doesn't work after 10 days, we're, we're just out. And I think, and I've, no, I don't remember what the technical, I can look up in the scanner really. So that's what the new dialog box looks like right here. 
Those are the technical opens. This is a new way to close trades if you want to. If we go to the scanner, the pro scanner, since I can't seem to remember that trade, I'm just gonna to go to the NASDAQ 100. I'll go to technical long strangles, and I know Apple is what I'm after. Here we go. I'll just tap on Apple. <clears throat> uh, this is gonna be a five-year back test. Let's make it 10 years. We'll make it a big back test. Oh yes, sorry, one more feature we've added. There's now a 10-year back, back test button. So now you can do 10 years. Of course, you can. if you click the settings button, you can go all the way to 2007. So you have, um, I guess that would be 12 years. And what am I doing? I'll click on technical open. Oh, so those were the settings I wanted. I wanted the stock to cross actively the day it crosses down through the 200-day moving average. And when it does that, the stock is also below the 10-day moving average. If these two aren't met at the same time, it's not a trade. Okay, so we have scans for that. Uh, it's going to be under the never trade earnings right there. And we also have four new scans for momentum right here. These are three days, seven day, 14 day uh, long calls with the technical requirement. I don't remember what the technical requirement is, so I'll just click on one. Here's Microsoft. Okay, the technical requirement was, okay, the stock price just has to be above the 50 day moving average. So we wait seven days before earnings. At that date, if the stock happens to be above the 50-day moving average, sweet. I'm going to go ahead and take a roll the dice on this one. Over the last three years, it's won eight times, lost two times. And you notice, since it's three years and there's only 10 earnings trades, that means two of those trades were avoided. That means that technical safety valve is coming up and saying, nope, not ready. In particular, I'm sure of it, it happened, yeah, for the last six months. Six months has two earnings sessions for Microsoft. No problem in July, stock was above the 50-day moving average. Uh, along came October, not so much, just skip the trade. So instead of having a trade, which would have lost us 30% on two trades, we have a technical trigger, which just avoids the bad trade and look at the difference. And that's really the key to any kind of momentum trading. Entry rules are pretty easy. It's the safety valve. How do you make sure you're not getting in when the market's about to collapse? You can't be sure 100% of the time, but it turns out with, this, uh, with some technical indicators, you can be sure most of the time. So that is a quick review of the new things that have been added. 10-year button, technical opens, closing trades after a certain number of days, and of course, new scans. In the alert section, we don't yet have uh, when the stock dips below the 200-day moving average or the 50-day moving average or whatever, we're gonna add that, right? So the next thing we're gonna add to Trade Machine, it's coming soon, are gonna be technical alerts which allow you to mimic those scans as alerts. And then you can just set it and forget it. And you, all of a sudden you get an alert, say, oh, wow, it's seven days before earnings for Microsoft and the stock is above the 50-day moving average, cool, I'm in. Or maybe you get another trigger which says, oh man, Apple just dropped below its 200-day moving average and it's below its 10-day moving average, I gotta get that strangle. It's time, it's time to bet on some volatility. So that's coming soon. Uh, and as always in the Discover tab, I've already been writing about them, so this article is that Apple uh, trade I showed and Amazon, here's Microsoft, things like that. So okay, I'm done with my formal presentation. And now uh, Jay and I are just going to turn it to questions. Uh, one thing, there actually are some people here who are not Trade Machine members, so I'm just going to do this real quick. If you're not a Trade Machine member, we're going to raise the price uh, because of this technical indicator or technical functionality. We're going to build out the technical function. Oh, man, I went too fast. We've also added stock. Sorry, this is now a stock back tester. So while you can do calls and puts, put spreads, call spreads, strangles, or build your own custom strategy, you can also just back test stock. If you're just a stock technical trader, you can now do that. You can just click stock and now you're back testing stock. Okay. I think that was uh, comprehensive. So if you're not a Trade Machine member, you can go to cmlviz.com, www.cmlviz.com slash webinar. You can get it for $89 a month. It's normally $149 a month. That price is going to go up. But if you sign up now, all of our members never see a price increase. I think we have one member, they might be on this webinar, who's paying $29 a month. One person. <laughs> um, they're our first Trade Machine member ever. So. That's where you get it. Now I'm gonna to go to questions. So uh, Jay, uh, can you help us walk through those? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I answered a few questions by text, but um, there were some good questions that came through that I'll, I'll speak to briefly. Um, someone had asked if you are running an earnings like back test, such as I wanna trade only earnings or I wanna avoid earnings. We'll take only earnings as an example right now. So that would be buying something like a straddle or call or whatever, in this case stock, just shortly before earnings. Um, 
yeah, with the technical, it might not open. But right. that's actually a good example too. So the, the, the question is with earnings, if you also have a technical indicator, which one is it doing? Is it doing the technical indicator or is it doing the earnings trigger? The answer is both. Um, and so if you say only earnings and you set a technical trigger, there's a very, very short window when that trade can happen. Because if you say only earnings, it's going to buy your strategy two days before earnings and then sell it two days after. But if the technical trigger doesn't trigger in that basically one to two day time frame before earnings, it won't happen. So when you set those rules together, uh, especially only earnings, you'll see things trade extremely rarely. Um, related to that is the idea of crossing. And so the cross event only happens on one day. So if you're saying, I want to trade when the 50 day moving average crosses the 200 day moving average, you know, that could be an indication if it's going up that things have turned around or if it's going down that maybe we're heading into something more bearish, that event only takes place on one day. And so th those won't trade very frequently just because of the nature of these things. Um, if you're, if you just want to trade when something is above something else, then that's what those other indicators are for. Um, so you can not do the crossing and just say, Hey, when the stock is above the 50 day or something like that. And, and that, that can happen for a long period of time. Those things are much more likely to happen around earnings than the crossing. The chance of something crossing the 50 day on the 200 day, two days before earnings is extremely small. Uh, so that's a few of those comments. One other thing, uh, when you do a back test, normally it runs five different back tests and it runs those for five different deltas. If you're new and you don't know too much about Delta, it's basically just saying how far into or out of the money it is. And it's a better way of saying what strike you're buying than just saying $5 out of the money. Because if a stock goes from 100 to 300, $5 out of the money is a pretty different option. So when you run a back test, it runs five different Deltas. You can set those Deltas in the settings gear. And if you're wondering, okay, well, I'm doing the 40 Delta, but what option do I buy when I actually want to trade this? You just go into your option montage of your wherever you do your trading and you just make sure that delta is there and then you just look up the delta for the expiration that you care about but yeah and that what ophir is showing there is we have a whole fact on what's delta faq and it's got a lot of great information it's a great learning resource um one quick comment on stock if we just ran five stock back tests when you clicked apple it would just run the same test five times in a row because stock doesn't have, there's no way to adjust Delta on stock. Stock Delta technically is always hundred, but basically, you know, just kind of the way there's not an expiration, it wouldn't make sense to have five back tests with different Deltas. So uh, when you run stock, you get the one back test and that's just to save space on your screen. Um, so those are a few things that came up and then we'll start diving into uh, a few more of these questions that Ophir can answer for you. Um, so Jeff asks, is above the 50 day moving average, the standard technical indicator for the, for most trades or just for demo purposes? Well, you know, it's a good question. Uh, some people like the 200 day. Um, I think that this is what, what I would say. I would say if you're looking for a bearish move or a volatile move, the 200 day is probably the one you want to see the stock go below. If you want to make sure that a stock isn't you know, in a downtrend and you want to do this pre-earnings momentum, I'm actually being a little bit more uh, restrictive and I want to see the stock above the 50 day moving average. I could do the 200 day moving average. and I could see which one is better, but if the stock is above the 50 day moving average. We don't know what's going to happen the next week. I wish we could guarantee it, but it's definitely not in a bear market right now. <laughs> um, if the stock is above the 200 day moving average and you want to get momentum, I don't know that it's, I don't know that it's ready for a momentum move right quite then. Um, so that, that's what I would say. I, I, I use different moving averages to try to determine different things. Uh, the 200 day moving average has been essentially shown many times to mean, you know, duck. Uh, when the S and P went below the 200 day moving average, things were bad in, in October. That's when things got really bad. Uh, when the S and P went below the 200 day moving average and then just all hell broke loose. So that, that would use different moving averages for different things. Great. Um, we have a user saying that like our charts have always been a little confusing to him. Um, would you mind just throwing up a few back tests, maybe two or three at once? Oh yeah. Or, yeah. Just doing different deltas or something and just kind of walking through. And also you can show how to turn on and off different back tests and how to hide stock. Okay. Sure. I don't even know what back test I'm running, but it's, it's just some back test. Um, so, 
Uh, you can see the stock is kind of getting in the way of these these um, charts. So I can just click or unclick. All of a sudden, you see much more clarity. I'll go also maybe make this a three-year back test. Of course, I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing, but we should do this. <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take stock off. Uh, maybe one of these in particular interests you. So, okay, so what am I doing? See, you see this bottom color here, this uh, orange? That's gonna be the orange uh, line. So this is NVIDIA. The light blue line or turquoise line is gonna be Apple. The red line is gonna be Google. You can take them on and off. So let's say you're like, oh, I don't, I don't wanna look at uh, Apple or um, NVIDIA, or sorry, I don't look at Apple, Google, I just wanna look at, uh, oh, I think that color's a little wrong. Yeah, this is supposed to be NVIDIA. So I just wanna look at NVIDIA. You can also turn off and on earnings dates. So we've added, that's actually something else I should have added. We've now put the earning dates in here so you can start seeing this momentum trades visually. So that's how you can start to um, use the charts uh, to help visualize what's going on. We are in the process in 2019 of kind of not kind of, uh, just getting more sophisticated charting capabilities so people can really dive in deep. That's gonna go hand in hand with new technical capabilities. But for now, that's how to use the charts. And if you ever find them confusing, you can go here and start selecting and deselecting um, lines so the chart makes a little bit more sense to you. Yeah, it looks like we, we just added a feature where it's showing the earnings on top of the chart too. It looks like that might've messed up the ticker. So we'll, uh, we'll get that fixed in the next day or two. But in general, the, the color will correspond to the to the PNL. That's just a short term, uh, little snafu. Uh, let me take. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go ahead, James, and try and pull up a cool scan with the charts. Oh, sorry. Just looking through the questions here. Okay, so Ross asks: Is the below two hundred moving average on the day it crosses, or if it is just below that average. Yeah, so so hopefully, I spoke to that a little bit, hopefully that helped. So you could do either one. Right. There is 200 day moving average above or below anything else like stock or 50. The crosses means the day before it was not above and now it is above. If you're saying crosses up through, means yesterday was below and today it's above. All right, so this is this first line, this first row here is very active. The day this thing happens, it's gonna be a trigger. Whatever it is, stock price, whatever moving average, crosses up or down through whatever moving average, that's active, that's on the day. These other ones are filters, right? So the stock price just has to be above the 50-day moving average, the stock can be above the 50-day moving average for a long time. Great, so we have a question. First of all, so guys, we, we do have 51 questions at this point. We're gonna do our best to answer. I know sometimes people get frustrated saying their question's not getting answered. Uh, we're certainly doing our best. Um, you can always email support at cmlbiz.com if you have questions that didn't uh, we didn't manage to answer during this uh, session. Um, so Frank is asking uh, for some of the scans, like the three, seven, 14 day pre-earnings trades, um, is it 30 days to expiration for all and is the Delta 50? It's a great question and also you can show our users how to get details on any of the scans if they ever have questions. Yeah, by so running it in settings. it's a good question, but rather than answer it, let's just see how we would figure it out. Let's just take the seven day pre-earnings um, and let's just take a look at, um, I don't know, let's say Texas Instruments. You're like, okay, cool scan, w what are you doing? <clears throat> this is using a, um, oh, text instance isn't very um, liquid, this is Microsoft. Okay. Uh, this is using seven day options, that's right here, days to expiration. Uh, when you click, well, let's see what else, a 40% stop and a limit, it's using the 40 delta. If you just click on a back test tile, I'm gonna, I'm gonna click my mouse button right now. Now you see the full back test. So you see everything that's going on. This is the Microsoft buying the 40 Delta calls. Um, these are all the trade data, um, summary data, and then all of the trades themselves. Of course, you can download it into Excel if you want to. But when you see a scan and you're curious what it's doing, just select uh, one of the results, go to it, and then just start checking it out. So this one too is like, well, the name of the scan was something like seven days pre-long call technical. Okay, well, what does technical mean? Well, let's just click on it. Oh, that's what technical means. Okay, this, so this scan is looking at the stock price above the 50-day moving average. You can do that on every scan. You click on it, take a look at a, a result, and you can figure out exactly what the settings are that we use for it. 
and they're consistent. Each scan is the same. So whatever we do for a seven, whatever we do for a seven day pre earnings long call, all of the seven days pre earnings long call are the same. We don't start switching it around. Great. Um, Fred asks, which uh, price do we use? Uh, we use closing closing market prices or the prices just moments before closing. It tends to be when the most trading happens and when things are the most liquid. So if you're trying to emulate the back test, that's the best thing you could do is just to trade in the kind of moments before the close. Oh, wait, quick, um, uh, quick note. Does anyone know why the end of the day has the most trading? Just curious. No, nobody, no volunteers. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of... Yeah, but do, why do the funds trade at the end of the day? Okay, so there's a lot of reasons. Um, one of the ones, as a hedge fund manager, I can tell you one of the reasons is when we try to get into stocks or out of stocks in bulk, large numbers, like $5 million, $10 million, $100 million, you don't just hit buy. Um, you have to do that throughout the day. And we tend to set, set things on some sort of algorithm. The algorithm we usually use is something like the uh, volume-weighted average price, VWAP. And we just tell the algorithm, accumulate through the day if the stock is below the volume weighted average price. But as you get to the end of the day, if the algorithm hasn't been getting everything it could, you also have a trigger that says, I need a fill, but I need to get my stock by the end of the day. And so by the end of the day, around 12.45, 12.50, they just start buying or selling. They got, they got to get their fill. And so that's a big part of why they say, oh, the algos, that's what they mean, just so you guys know. I, I feel like there's a lot of magic magical language used around the stock market and none of it is magical at all. None of it is complicated at all and none of it is above you at all. So there's, there's, one, there's one of the reasons that there's a lot of volume at the end of the day. The VWAP algorithms or whatever algorithms, they just need to get a fill so they, start, they just start buying or selling. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, some other people mentioned, yeah, day traders need to flatten out their positions. Right, right, exactly. All that stuff. Yeah, um, yeah so someone asked if, uh, you know, we had the, the normal questions. Do we, does this include ETFs and what about uh, weekly options? Yeah. So we have every ETF. Um, we showed that SPY trade. I think I have that up here. Actually, here's that SPY trade. Um, every ETF traded on American exchanges. Um, and then what was the other question? The question was, uh, are, are weekly expirations also included? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, so you can use any expiration you want. Uh, I'm just going days to expiration right here. So the back tester is going to try to find the days. It's not going to try to. It's going to successfully find the the uh, options that are closest to the days to expiration you put. So if you put seven days, and a stock only has thirty day options, it's going to choose the monthly options. But most stocks now have weekly options, so you just put a seven in here, and there you go. You're going to get weekly options. Um, if you want to do the monthly options, you put a thirty. You want to do the two week options, you do fourteen. So yeah, and any any expiration that exists, you can get with trade machine for sure. Great. Um, two questions. One is very short. Frank asks, is the video you played currently posted? Yes. Great. And the second is, um, all examples in the scan seem to be using the 40 Delta. Why is that? Yeah, it's a, a fair question. I like, I like 40 Delta. I like out of the money options. They're a little bit cheaper and there's a little bit more leverage to them. If you're using 50 Delta options, you're probably going to find a slightly higher win rate. Actually, by definition of Delta, you would but the percentage gain is gonna be a little less. You can feel free to kind of snoop around. So I'm just gonna uh, go down here, just do it in real time. <clears throat> All right, so here's Microsoft. Uh, let's just add, I don't know, gosh. Okay, so that's how it looks for those two, a 40 delta, but if I want to change it to a 50 delta, I just go ahead and click the 50, it's the middle one. And now I'm going to look at the 50 deltas and look, I mean, look what a difference it was for win. Win went from a terrible trade to a good trade. So you can always toggle it. We use 40 delta because I like to use slightly out of the money options when I'm making these trades. Great. Um, let's see here. Um, Brian asks uh, if alerts are coming in real time or what's, what's the expected behavior? Um, right now, they're, what, how often are they getting run? Once an hour? Yeah, exactly. So, so the, the alerts are medium newish feature. That tab on the far right is one of the newest ones. And so, yeah, right now we're running about every hour. We do check against intraday prices and we run technicals and all those things against intraday prices. But yeah, they run hourly right now. Um, so they're not, they're not real time, but they should be, you should be getting them in a time that's useful for, you know, trading 
for a back tester that's doing mostly end of day trades. Um, if for any reason you're not seeing alerts that you're expecting to see, you can certainly uh, email support at cmlbiz.com. Um, but yeah, they, they run about once an hour right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Um, got that one. Yeah, we still have 64 answers um, or 64 questions to answer. When deltas don't match up with current strikes, is there a suggestion of higher or lower delta or just use the closest to the delta of the strategy? Just use the closest to the delta of the strategy. We have, a, in the Discover tab, we have an FAQ, which actually answers that question. Which delta do you choose? But you got it. You choose the delta that's closest. Or let's put it this way. Trade machine chooses the delta that's closest. You do as you see fit. Absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes what I'll do if, if the stock doesn't have a lot of strikes or, you know, if a stock is at $10 and there's a, you know, stocks at $11 and there's a 10 or a 1250 strike and those are pretty different. One's 60 Delta and one's 30 Delta. I'll actually just go into the back tester and run both. I'll just run the deltas that are actually there. Like maybe I was testing a 40 Delta, but that doesn't exist. I'll say what's done better, the 30 Delta or the 50 Delta, and then I'll, I'll buy the option that way. So that's, if you want to take the extra moment, you can do that one extra step. Good idea. I like it. Um, if, if you choose less than seven days to expiration, what happens? Asks yeah. Gene. I was just going to choose the options that are the, the shortest to expiration options. You know, right as of right now, other than SPY, you're not going to find options less than seven days, depending on when you start your back test. Like if you lit, I mean, literally, is this a Thursday or something, <laughs> you know, uh, and you wanted one day options, it would, it would choose the option that expires in one day, but the next week, it would just go to the weekly option. So the trade machine can't um, manifest options which don't exist. It just goes the closest to those that do exist. That's actually a good point. There's nothing synthetic about trade machine. It's real prices, real executions, real options. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and sometimes we'll get people, they'll, they'll write into us, they'll put a seven day option and they're running a back test. And it's like, why is it trading the monthlies? We, we, I entered seven for the options. Um, it's because not all stocks have weeklies. And just like Ophir said, I mean, we're you, we're doing our absolute best to simulate the real trading conditions, and so uh, it's it's just doing its best to find the options that are closest to that. But it's all based on real data. Yeah, I would say in particular, when you start doing ten-year back tests, you're going to see that, right? Because ten years ago there weren't really weeklies. Five years ago, they started becoming more uh, prolific. So if you're doing a really long back test, you could actually see weekly, 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 and start going to monthly. So we have a question from Dan, and I think this is worth us diving into a little bit. Um, Dan asks, on open immediately after a set percentage gain, and I might uh, start, yeah, okay, there you go. And open immediately after a set percentage gain, percentage gain does technical trigger still apply? Um, the answer to that is yes, it does. So if it, it will close itself uh, normally, according to the close trade when, but things should only reopen after if the technical trigger is still true. So if you try to open immediately with a cross, uh, you'll probably see it not trade very often because again, the crosses are, are quite uh, infrequent. Um, but yes, all opens should open later. And in fact, things that would normally roll, um, there'll be sort of a one day difference. If you do the technical open, even if the technical open is true, it's gonna wait for the next day to make sure that technical is open for a trigger. So, um, all opens should be subject to the technical trigger. Yep. What Jay said. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's a great question. So we answered that one. Um, let's see. I'm going to scroll up. We had a really great set of kind of questions and comments. It was about. Okay, so we have from the anonymous attendee. Uh, it's a little long, but I'll, it, it's a bunch of good stuff in it. Happy New Year. Will you consider adding a technical close option eventually? Also, independent of the technical open option discussed, um, and live alerts or entry and exit with technicals, how about multiple time frames for the moving average? Is that too complex? Might be nice to give the back tester enough context. Entry and exit for Fibonacci retracements. Will we ever be able to build, compile an option robot that will trade these rules for us in a confined account? Nice trick with the earnings labels on the chart. Looks great. Nice work. So there's a, there's about seven questions there. We might not enter all of them in detail, but uh, these are all the sorts of things that we're we're actively thinking about and sort of working on as next steps right now. Um, specifically, the technical alerts will happen very soon. I mean, that's going to be pretty much the next thing that we're going to build. Anytime we we put 
a feature into the trade machine, um, we're immediately, our immediate focus isn't like, okay, academically, this looks like it has great results, but practically, how are our users going to take this backtest result and implement it in a way that's helping their improve their results? And so uh, and that's, that's why the alerts are in the product, because we want to make this as actionable as, as possible for our users. Um, one other just general concept, in case you've been with us more recently or you're getting to know us for the first time, the, the way we do what we do is we lean on our community and we, we ask them and we engage with them. We have webinars like this and we say, hey, what's, what's valuable to you? What do you, what do you care about? What's going to help you get edge in the market? Um, we listen, we take feedback on support, and we send surveys periodically. And we say, okay, hey, this is, these are the four things that people have been asking a lot about. What's the most important to you guys? And so um, the, the whole philosophy behind what we're doing is, is sort of building a community, uh, leveraging you know, all the smart people out there and all the great ideas and trying to build something which is helping um, the, the largest number of our users possible. Yep. And so thanks for all that. Um, the, the, Specifically, uh, technical closes is would definitely be something on the roadmap. Probably not in the next month or so, but it's definitely something that we're we're looking at. It's a natural complement to the technical opens. Um, we also had people ask about futures. Uh, futures is something that uh, we're very interested in doing. Futures and futures options. Um, our commitment to our users is to never raise prices on on people that are existing, and so. You know, a lot of the things that we're doing increase our costs, such as adding 10 years of data. You know, we have to add a lot more servers and a lot more, uh, it just takes a lot more computation. Um, and so it's a little bit of a balancing act. If we add futures for all of our users, it gets, uh, you know, we can't put ourselves underwater in terms of the money coming in, but it's, uh, it's a lot of work, but a really cool data set, and we'd, uh, we'd love to add it. And it's kind of something that we're looking at for the possible future. Okay, Jeff says, wow, incredible upgrade. Thank you. Um, while testing strategies, the test starts on a specific date, day of the week and a month. There could be a specific pattern related to this entry and we could be getting the results narrowly fitted to this calendar pattern. Can you add a feature for rerun the test for each day of the week or on a month? Or is there a better way to avoid this kind of trap? Um, I would just run it over multiple years. So here's 10 years, five years, three years, uh, six months. You know, I think that's the best way to probably run any back test. Man, the Starbucks strangle looks crazy good. Um, uh, yeah, that, I think that's it. I mean, if you wanted to toggle through it, you could just make sure you weren't getting some weird anomaly. Um, I don't, don't think you are. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the only time I would really worry about that is if you're looking at like a three month back test, then yeah, maybe you want to start toggling day by day. So. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of what I was going to suggest as well is with the settings, if you're concerned that like, if you're starting on a Tuesday, it's going to get weird, then start one day earlier and see if the results are different. You know, I don't think you'll find that they're different. Like over your set, if it's over a longer period of time, um, but making small, small tweaks to the settings and making sure that the results are stable is actually something in data science, which is, you know, it refers to kind of the robustness of your, of your back test and your idea. So, you know, if, if the 50 Delta works, the 45 Delta should work pretty well too. And if you're, if you're seeing that it doesn't, then it's, it's good reason to be a little more cautious in entering. Uh, we think you'll find that it's, it's generally not as sensitive as you, as you might think. Yeah. I would also say generally what I try to do is find a trade that I want. And then I try to find every reason that I should not take it. And if I cannot pr prove to myself that I don't want to take it, I take it. So I change the years, I change the date, I change the limits and stops. And, and if it all looks kind of the same, I'm in. If I make a little change and it's off, eh, pass. There's enough, there, there are enough trades here that you could trade 35 times a day and be full. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to find the best of those 35 trades. And maybe that it means not even trading today. So feel free to toggle through it and look for a reason not to do a trade. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, we've had several people, Ophir, ask to see the sort of bearish inversion of our pre-earnings thing. You know, obviously, if it's like if it's helping our gains to eliminate these trades, what if we take, what if we sell the call, or what if we buy a put? So, all right, let's give it a shot. 
I'm just gonna get this the setup for the seven day call the bullish one just so I don't mess it up. <clears throat> All right. All right, stock price below the fifty day moving average. That was easy. Pretty hard, yeah. It's pretty hard to buy puts in a bull market. Um, I would, if I'm going to do this, I'd start stacking, right? So I'd say, <clears throat> okay, here, I'm going to try and invent a bear market um, signal. Let's see if I can. I'm, I'm not sure I can right now, but uh, it's going to be the stock crossing down the 200 day. <clears throat> I want the stock to be below the 50 day as well. Um, I want the 10 day to be above the stock. I'm probably getting there. Yeah, which just shows you I'm trying to get really bearish. It's happened once in 10 years. Um, that's probably going to be a lot of the problem. Oh, custom earnings. I don't need custom earnings. Okay, well, there you go. So I found a strategy which has, there's 40, uh, how awesome is that? 40? Oh, hold on. Okay, so this trade hasn't happened very often. <laughs> this trade has happened 10 times in uh, 10 years. But here's the beginnings of how to get short or trigger to get short. And all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find times where the stock's clearly um, kind of headed down. So breaking down below the 200, the stock price already below the 50 day. Oh, maybe actually I'll probably do that. Yeah, well, I'm getting closer, right? So these are the ways that I try to find um, bearish setups. Also, if I was really interested in that, um, I might want to start focusing on the last six months or look at that. So that's buying a put in the last six months using this technical trigger or 2007 to 2009. So look what we just found. If you're looking for trades that work in a bear market, here's the Great Recession, 152%. Here's, you know, our version of a, of a down market in 2018 right there. And then you do it over the, like, say, the last 10 years. It's also up 100%. So this is the beginnings of one. I'll just leave it there in case anyone wants to take a screenshot. But I just said stock crosses down the below the 200. The 200 day is already below the 50 day. And the stock's um, below the 10 day, which is a fancy way of saying the 10 days above the stock. Um, I might out do an RSI too. Like I, I don't want the stock to be below the 30 day. That's a 30 RSI. I don't want to be oversold. Okay. Yeah. So there's the beginnings of one right there. There's a weekly option trade, which has worked in both bear markets. And I've hardly even started, right? So you can definitely construct one and then start building this out. I mean, it's, you know, don't do one stock, obviously. Like try stocks that are similar in nature. Um, but stocks go down. It can't just be a stock that always goes up. Look at that. How about the Great Recession? Look at that. Okay, so it looks like we found something for Apple if you wanted to get bearish on Apple. Um, right there, right? So that's what I would do. It's exactly it. I just try to stack the moving averages, try to create the moments that the stock does something that looks like it's going to lose, um, kind of lose its strength while making sure I'm not doing something that's oversold. So we got a nice one right there with Apple, I think. Cool. I think that was a great example and a great way to see um, how, you know, how the back test can be kind of put to work and, and how you can kind of dig in and start experimenting. And then obviously the more stocks you test, uh, the better. Um, we had a couple questions about uh, tutorials. One is, do we have anything in kind of like a PDF or text format? Because videos are great, but they're hard to kind of skim through. And another asked if there's video tutorials. So maybe you can show some of that stuff. So good news and bad news. Uh, the bad news is we don't have PDFs because people tend to like video. By the way, as an aside, by 2020, 80% of the content we consume on the internet is going to be video. Um, doesn't mean we shouldn't have a PDF that was an excuse. We just don't. I just want you guys to know that. So if you can think of stocks that are headed toward video, you might want to get long. Um, yeah, we have a lot of tutorials. So we have a tutorial that teaches you how to become an expert in uh, volatility trading. It's, it's, we call it volatility mastery. Um, I'll just say the thing I always say, which people probably are tired of me saying, but option trading is volatility trading, whether you mean it to be or not. So you might not know what level of volatility you're trading. Don't fool yourself. You're trading the volatility anyway. So you might as well be a volatility master. So there's one there. We have a user's manual, which is going to need an upgrade pretty soon. <laughs> now that we have these new features. Um, we have videos on how to use the scanner. Uh, we have videos on how to use some of the technical indicators. We have videos on how to set alerts. So all of that's there. We don't have a lot of written word stuff other than, of course, our trade machine insights. So three of these a week, of course. But Yeah. 
That's it. Um, we have 87 open questions. So it's uh, usually when we add cool features, like that's when we generate the most interesting questions. Um, let's see. So we have some people asking for things. Um, oh yeah. Is this new version online now? Yes, it sure is. Uh, if for any reason you don't see it, yeah, it'd be great if you could put that up for, for the new people here. Um, if for any reason you don't see it, if you hit control and shift and hit the refresh button on your browser, it will kind of force a new version to load. So you might, you might have an old version. Yeah. So that's, uh, the, the files have been updated, so it shouldn't really be necessary, but yeah, that's a, that's a good way to force new files to come through in case, in case you happen to catch a version that was being updated or something. Um, yeah. And what Ophir put up there is, you know, that's the, that's the price that link above is how you can get, uh, the discounted price for for the Trade Machine Pro. Um, the price goes up over time as, as the service gets more expensive for us to run, but our promise to our users is that we won't raise the price. And so uh, we definitely encourage you to, to jump on board the offer if this looks like something exciting to you. Um, we also promise our users like, hey, if, uh, if you try it for a couple of weeks and you don't like it, no questions asked. I mean, maybe a question like, let us know what we can do better, but um, <laughs> No exceptions in terms of uh, we, we give you a full refund. So, um, and we're also not weird about like, yeah, if it's been 31 days, we're, you know, our, our users like it. We don't have an issue with people canceling very frequently. So, if it's not right for you because you only trade interday futures, um, we're happy to give you a refund. So, I think um, one point too, if you, you can probably see it by now, we've been saying it for a while. Uh, as we're, you know, this, this little button, this technical open that looks um, innocuous enough, but this is going to be an entire full-blown stock backtest, right? It's this may be more full feature than tra the rest of trade machine, right? So, everyone who's a trade machine member is going to get it. People who are not. This is I keep telling you, this is going to be a five hundred dollar a month product, a month, right? So six thousand dollars a year. We're just building it out, and as we add things, we raise the price. If you're in now, you you get it for that price. Like I told you, I think there's one person who's paying twenty nine dollars a month. Some people are paying 49, some people are paying 69, 79, 89. Um, we're building it out and it's gonna be rather big. So just just keep that in mind. If you, if you don't like it, then it doesn't matter if it's free, but if you like it, I would mind mind the pricing because we don't, we don't go backwards. Yeah, and we also have some people who would prefer to pay yearly. And so if you email support, we can send you a link to, um, to the option to pay yearly. Um, we've had a couple questions about the length for RSI. Uh, it's currently using 20 days. Um, the moving averages are currently simple moving averages. Um, we have thought about making that something that users can uh, adjust and tweak. Um, we don't want to completely get too complicated on the tool, but that might be something that we do offer in the future. Uh, if you feel that's something that's really important to you, then please, uh, please let us know. That feedback is definitely helpful. Yeah, we'll send a um, a poll soon, and it'll include things you know, like, do you want us to work on technicals now? And that's going to be Fibonacci to a you know MACD to a whole bunch of other stuff. Or do you want us to chill out on technicals and maybe look at like volatility rank, IV percentile? You know, uh, it's, you're you're, you're going to get the alerts, so you don't have to worry about that. That's coming. You know, so in our next poll, we're going to ask like, how, how far do you want us to go down this rabbit hole right now, as opposed to say more volatility stuff? So you guys will be able to vote, um, and we'll get it in there. Great. Uh, we just had a comment from a user saying that he loves the webinars. Maybe we could have a regular schedule for them, um, which I think we'd certainly be open to. Yeah. Um, right now, it's kind of like whenever we have cool new features or something great to talk about. Um, but I think it's good to get together and answer questions also. You probably agree with that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Gene asks, is the pricing month to month? Yep. If you, if you want to pay month to month, that's the standard way of signing up. So uh, no long term concerns. Let's see here. Um, we, we have some interest in uh, Fibonacci stuff. That's definitely something we can look at. Um, we have a question about uh, illiquid trades or, and, and Jim also asked about open interest, which I think you have an interesting uh, kind of view of open interest. Yeah, so liquidity for sure. Uh, if you get, I think we actually found, I think it was Texas Instruments here. I'm going to show you what happens when there's an illiquid, illiquid trade first. Uh, we, we want to warn you because I mean, we, we want these things to work, right? 
Um, so let me, I think Texas Instruments. There you go. So the strategy for Texas Instruments, 40 Delta calls used options with low liquidity and therefore unreliable full prices. For example, on the 24th of October, 2016, the $70 and a half strike had a bid of a buck 75 and an ask in offer of 405, okay, and daily volume of six, right? So we're gonna let you know if a trade doesn't look liquid. <clears throat> doesn't mean that it isn't liquid, but you, you should at least look at it. Um, I, I don't, we don't look at open interest and I just, uh, you know, I feel free to disagree. It's okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to impose my will on anyone, but. As a market maker, I don't think I looked at open, I think I hid the open interest column from my montage until I neared expiration to know if someone was trying to put on, you know, some massive trade because they had some inside information. I, I don't care about open interest at all. I mean, it, it matters nothing to me, nothing. Um, it might matter to me if I was doing order flow analysis, right? I'm trying, I'm starting to see a line build and I wanna know if they're opening or closing. Yeah, okay, then, I change my mind. Then I like open interest a lot, but I'm not really an order flow trader anymore. And so when it comes to back testing, I don't care at all. What I care about is the width of the bid and the offer. How, how wide is the NBBO? If it's, if it's tight enough and I can trade it, I'm going to trade it. I don't care what the open interest is. And just so you know, you're not going to get a better fill just because there's a high open interest. Just because people have positions doesn't mean they want to unwind them. Right? So don't, don't fool yourself into, some, into thinking a price is better than a price. You think about the execution price you want to get. If you can get it and you want to do a trade, do it. If you cannot, it doesn't matter what the open interest is. Don't do the trade. Don't force a trade. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, Joe asks, and I think this kind of goes back to our philosophy. He asks, when we have the scan results uh, and the alerts and things, mm -hmm. will we be showing if the trade is currently active? for like a technical, if we have a technical where the 50 days over the 200 day, like are we gonna to try to show if that's active? Um, I, in, I don't know. I, in, in general, everything we do, we try to make the trades as actionable as possible. So if there's a way that we can simplify the steps involved for our community to, to place the trade, then that's, that's what we'll be trying to build, so. Yeah, it's an interesting idea, like if we had a column here that said, I think this requires the stock to be above the 50 day. We're just, you know, something says like stock is above 50 day. I don't know. We could do something like that. Maybe. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think so too. Um, okay. Let's see here. Um, Roy asks, we put a lot of folks seem to be doing a lot of scanning of like Apple, Nvidia, et cetera. Why is there such a big focus on those? Oh, you know, you're not going to like this answer very much, Roy. I do it because people are most interested in those stocks. So if I, I talk about them, I tend to get people's interest. I, I have no, my focus with option trading is to profit. <laughs> That's it. I don't care what stock I'm trading. So <clears throat> those stocks do tend to be very liquid. So they're a great test, uh, basket of stocks to test against. Because if it ain't working with them, it's not going to work against something that's less liquid. But um that's really the only reason. Um, I use the scanner totally agnostically. So I go to the scanner. Let's just say I wanted to do, I mean, I'm like itching to do this um, long strangles trade. And I, uh, let's just do it over the S&P 500. And I wanted to do it over 10 years, right? Well, the number wins. Um, right. So I don't care what index or how famous these stocks are. If it looks good to me, I'm doing it, right? So let's look at FMX. I don't even know what FMX is. Um, okay, well, it's not liquid, so I wouldn't do that one. But that that's it. I, I, I'm i agnostic. Oh, Exxon Mobil. Ooh, tricky. An oil stock. Um, so, yeah, I use those because they're liquid and people are most familiar with them. But when it comes to trading, I'll trade whatever. I'll trade whatever. Absolutely. Um, kind of a question on Delta. Again, Roy asks, uh, it would be great to be able to back test on moneyness of strikes versus current stock price. For example, backtesting selling a put on stocks which have a strike price that are 5% out of the money. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm bringing this one up because I know we have you know a couple hundred people um, watching that are, are new to the trade machine. I know for some of our current users, um, they'll know how, how we do this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting idea. Um, it's possible, put in a poll. I don't think it's gonna win because people are gonna want 
more of this stuff, but uh, Delta is the building block of option trading, right? Delta is determined by volatility and volatility is the building block. But I mean, we have uh, this thing, what is Delta and why it matters? I think if you read this, uh, kind of digest it, I think you'll realize that you're never going to want to use anything other than Delta. Having said that, yeah, it's a reasonable idea and we can, we'll put it in a poll. And if people say, hey, we want to start doing it by money, this, okay. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I imagine that you know the forty-five delta is going to track pretty close with the five percent out of the, out of the money. So that's that's the way the machine uh, currently works. Um, Matthew's asking, when do we anticipate adding other technical tools such as CCI and inertia, linear regression curves, and slopes? When yeah. we all do, would we be able to combine them in order to do multi-stack scenarios, such as if the price is above the fifty-day simple moving average and the CCI has crossed one hundred or negative one hundred? Yes, we're going to do all of that as long as everyone wants it. That's what I was trying to say. This this quiet little button here, which is already unbelievably powerful, uh, this technical open, this this little button could be an app twice as big as Trade Machine <laughs> is right now. So we'll, we'll send a poll out, and if, if that's what you know the community's clamoring for, we'll do it. We'll do it. There's no limit to what we won't do for you guys. So. Absolutely. Yeah, now that we've kind of done a lot of the work for – Starting the technicals, it's uh, it's a lot less work to to keep building from there. So we're definitely excited for it if that's what our users want. Uh, we have a question from Sheldon saying, "Is the software web based and uh, does it work on a Mac?" Oh yeah, it's web based. It's just URL. Yep, web based and it should work on a Mac. I'd rather use Chrome on a Mac than Safari, but uh, give Safari a shot if it doesn't try Chrome or Mozilla. Firefox is fine. Yeah, I concur. Let's see here. Um, Who wants to do this oil stock? I'm just curious who's with me right here. I'm, I'm dying to do the stock in mobile. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's good. We need a good polling survey thing in this tool. Um, we have a question about the bid ask spread. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. might be a good thing to show. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> there are three types of execution fill types here. Um, and execution fill types is a fancy way of saying which price you use. So, you can buy on the offer, buy on the ask, and sell on the bid. That's called a market order. I pray that none of you are doing that uh, for stocks or options. Please always use a limit order. Um, when market orders came into the when market orders came into the floor, <laughs> the brokers couldn't. Well, they wouldn't call. It was open outcry. They wouldn't say it out loud. They get all of our attention and say, "All right, guys, it's a market order," and everyone would stand up. And they would say the order, and the first person that would say bid or, or offer, so buy it or sell it, would get it. That's because every market order made us so much money that it was absurd. Don't use market orders. But if you want to test market orders, you can do that. Buy on the offer, sell on the bid. Halfway between the bid and offer is how you can roughly value an option. That's a rough way of saying it. Certainly, if it's like $1.90 at $2, maybe the option's about $1.95 ish. Uh, that's what we use in our scams because that's what our uh, members ask for. If you want to go a little bit less, uh, or be a little bit less optimistic, go halfway between mid-market and market, then you could go to here, halfway between mid-market and market. So there are three different ways to uh, test strategies or test skills. Um, you can see the, the results are almost always very similar unless you're dealing with a wildly um, illiquid stock or and if it is that illiquid then pass just yeah you know. i mean you could try a filled in market but i would just pass that was a long way great. of saying you can set it yourself yeah. great um yes we have a handful of users asking uh, when does the 89 price uh, go away and when can i no longer uh, take advantage of it and we have someone saying that if they could wait a day or two until the new year it would work better for them all right how about this i will Push it out January 2nd. There you have it. Um, great. Um, we have someone asking about average trade return rather than just cumulative. Uh, he's saying it would be a great thing to add. That's and right it here. Turns out we already have it. Yeah, so click on a backtest tile. You get the average trade return. You also get the average winning trade and the average losing trade. You also get the uh, gross gain and gross loss in dollars. So, yeah, uh, it's... Uh, Important to note that, well, you know, 
I fall prey to the same thing. I just tend to use the tiles and that's good enough for me. But, you know, if you're really being rigorous, you should click on a back to style and just make sure everything's kosher. I don't mean kosher like we made a mistake. I mean, just make sure everything's kosher. <laughs> you know, like, um, yeah, I was like, okay, what is the average win? All right, okay, okay, okay. What's the average trade? Was this just one trade that went out? You know, it's like, so you can look at it and you can scroll through all the trades or I just like putting it in Excel. So yeah, we already have that uh, information for you. For sure. Yeah, and that's actually a great feature. I'm not sure if, if I was typing an answer when you showed that, but yeah, you can actually download all of the trades too for people that haven't seen that feature yet. Oh yeah, so you can click download and save, save an Excel file. I'm just show you that this is easier. If you click copy, okay, then you open up Excel, which is probably going to happen somewhere randomly on one of my multiple monitors. Where is it? Oh, here it is. As I load the 75 plugins I have for Excel. Okay. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna bring my Excel over here. So I'm just gonna hit paste, right? Actually, I'm just gonna hit Control V. There are all the trades, magic, right? <clears throat> and you can see the profit and loss every trade, trade date. So you can just go through every trade and really dig deep. Um, this is a pretty valuable exercise when you get into the uh, ETF trading, I think. Um, and remind me to just finish on that one when we're done, but yeah. D download the trades, take a look at them, kick them around, see if there's a weird trade that made it look too good. All worth it, right? Again, find a trade, make sure it's as you want, and then try to prove to yourself that you don't want to do it. Like just, just try to poke holes in your theory. Poke holes, poke holes, poke holes. Once you can't, you've got yourself something that you can believe in. And that's, you know, we all want it to go up. But if the trade doesn't go up, at least you're going to know, like, hey, you know what? I did my due diligence on this trade. So. Great. Uh, another Jason asks, he says, great work, guys. Constantly adding new value keeps me a big fan. Just wanting to cast my vote in favor of multiple Fibonacci retracement timeframes. Is that Jason D? Uh, it's Jason F. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll send on, I'll send out, oh, you guys are on me. I'll send, I, we got our CMO Pro webinar on the third. I'm going to send out a poll about this stuff coming up soon. I also, I don't want to send a poll before you guys get to use it. Like, I want to give you a week or two to use it and figure out what you, you know, as usual, like, oh man, you know what I wish I had? That's when we get good answers on the poll. So it's coming. Oh, by the way, guys, all of this was built because of you, right? You asked for this in one way or another over various polls. We put it together and built it for you. So you, you are, you control our development. Great. Um, he also asks, uh, when will this seminar be available for later viewing? Um, it's recording to the cloud, so I'll probably email it tomorrow. Great. Um, Tom asks, can you configure commission costs for back tests? Yes. Click on settings, add your commissions per contract options, per share stock. Now that we have stock, um, absolutely. Perfect follow-up question from Paul. Is there a way to set the default number of contracts to one? One. <laughs> that was the perfect timing of that question, Paul. So that's the settings here in the top right. Yeah, it's all here. It's also where you can set the dates by hand, right? So you can go all the way back to 2007, 0101. Actually, just since we're here, this is what I like to do. I like to really, really test the, there's no, there's only 30 days in September. I like to really, really test the bear market. And so what I do is the bear market actually, the Great Recession was from these dates. It was the 30th of um, September 2007 to the 1st uh, of uh, uh, April in 2009. This is the Great Recession right here. So, yeah, just another thing you can do in the settings window. Oh, look at that. No, I really want to do this trade. Okay. <laughs> um, awesome. Uh, we have a question about, also from Jason, about uh, correlated pair trading. I think that's super exciting. We haven't had a lot of requests on it for pair trading, but I do think it'd be a cool feature. Yes, like everyone's long Disney and short Netflix, right? No, just kidding. Not really kidding. <laughs> Not allowed to say that. But uh, yeah, pair trading could be a thing for sure. Um, let's see here. Yeah, a lot of interest in Fibonacci. We have a lot of people chiming in and saying they'd love to see the uh, Fibonacci retracements and things. So we'll definitely get that out in the next poll because it's it's something that we've thought about quite a bit as well. Yeah, should I show CML Viz or should I skip it? Um, I. I would probably save it for another okay. day. Right. Well, I mean, there's definitely some cool stuff on. on uh, I was, was going to show the pivot points. Yeah, totally. Yeah, might as well. We're kind of we're, we're approaching the end of the webinar, and so we'll show you some kind of free tools that are also available. Yeah. For now, if you go to cmlbiz.com and you go to uh, pivot points, 
the pivot point chart is going to show you everything. Fibonacci, retracements, extensions, 200-day moving average, 50-day moving average, 10-day moving average, 52-week high, 52-week low. So you can see exactly where a stock is, right? Like if you had a trigger that Apple, when Apple falls below the 10-day moving average, something should happen, then that just triggered. Um, we're going to get that in alerts in Trade Machine, obviously. We're not going to, but for now, feel free to go to cmovis.com, pivot points, and you, at least you have a place to look at it. Nice and neat. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Perfect. Um, so yeah, I think we're kind of running towards the end. The, the, there's definitely plenty of questions that we didn't have a chance to uh, get to, but you can always email support at cmlbiz.com. Um, we have someone asking to see the link again, if you wouldn't mind putting that up up here. Oh, yeah. I can answer a few of these too. Uh, do you think the eight-day moving average is relevant? Uh, uh, maybe. We could put it in there and we could see if it is. I don't use it a lot. Uh, oddly, some people like the EMA for the eight-day moving average. Um, would you like, would you have the SPY four leg custom trade for a down stack market? Uh, I, I would try anything for a down stack market. Definitely. Uh, bear setups we got. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. There's, you know, questions like what's your most favorite and profitable scan? All kinds of questions. Oh, I could tell you my favorite scan right now. Uh, uh, this nice thing about making the scans myself is that I get to make my favorites. Um, I love this technical long strangle. I'm completely, uh, in fact, I'm getting so excited about it. I'm now going through the process of like, okay, when is it not going to work? I'm trying to poke holes in my own um, excitement. But in this market where stocks are going to, I think, stocks are going to bounce up and down below the 200 day moving average, whew, this could be, as trade mission members know, this bear market has been good to us for option trading and it could, it could get a lot better. Um, so great. Um, here's a, here's a question on the new feature. It says if the stock drops below the 200 day moving average during the day, but is above the 200 day moving average at the end of the day, does this count as a cross of the 200 day moving average, which I can, I can answer that. Um, yeah, yeah we started, uh, using the highs and lows of the data to calculate the moving averages, but it actually was creating a little bit more headache and confusion for the users. So it would only qualify if it, if it closes the end of the day with whatever the technical trigger is, it has to close there in order to, to count as a trigger. Yeah. And I'll also, that's actually particularly important because particularly with looking at moving averages, it's the close that matters. That's what people are looking at. In fact, if a stock goes below its 200 day moving average intraday and then comes back up, you might even think that's bullish as opposed to a bearish signal. Just putting that out there. Great. Uh, when running a back test, how does CMO choose which is the 50 delta when the actual deltas are 49 or 51? Ha. Well, turns out that decimals have inf infinite numbers, so there are, there are no ties. Yeah, exactly. Um, so which, yeah, whichever one is closer down to the very low decimal place. Um, we have a question about open interest and volume. I think we, we answered that. We don't focus on open interest, but if users decide that they care about that, we can, we can look at it. Um, the technical indicators like 50 day moving average is based on the price at the close of the day. Yep, exactly. Can I get alerts based on the win rate with certain technical conditions without choosing tickers? It's like pro scan, but for alerts. Uh. Well, you can there, go yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Jake. Yeah, I was going to say that we, we are starting to add alerts where instead of signing up for an individual ticker, you can sign up for a basket of stocks for technical alerts. So uh, directionally, yes, whether it will be win rate per se is another question. But um, for some of the technical alerts, you're starting to be able to say for the Dow 30 or the S&P 500, essentially, I'm waiting to be alerted to all of them rather than having to uh, specify individual tickers. So that's uh, essentially, essentially the answer is basically yes, that's starting to be there and it, it will be built up that way. Yeah. And keep in mind that when you enter alerts, you, you can enter them comma delimited. So you can be like, you know, you can enter 50 alerts at once. Just, just to let you guys know. Right. So if, I'll just do it again here. You know, I, I want, well here, Exxon mobile, Apple, uh, oh, those are, we don't have those yet. So NVIDIA, Tesla, Netflix. I wanted to know before, days before earnings. I would just do all this stuff and add it. You can add them all at once. You'll get, you'll get, you can add your alerts at once. So we're kind of semi there. 
Yes, totally. And and just as a little bit of a reminder, so for example, with the one day after earnings jump, uh, you can actually go and pull that up. Yeah, if you go, if you scroll down to that over here and click that, you can see a little note on the bottom that should pop up here. And it says, this is a kind of a, a scan alert that tracks the one day jump. It's essentially a, a technical move around earnings. And for that, you can, you can enter Dow 30, NASDAQ 100, or S&P 500 as the ticker. And it will actually scan against all of those things for you. So uh, the technical alerts that we do have in there, only those two so far uh, do, do allow that. This is a cool trade, by the way, um, just for anyone watching. <laughs> this is, uh, let me show what this is. It's this trade. All right. When, when does an earnings beat I mean the stock's going to tr keep trailing higher? So there are certain stocks and certain technical requirements, and you can set all of the NASDAQ 100 for alerts for that, for example. Great. Yeah, and William says, regarding SPY, it does have three expirations per week now. Right, exactly. So, yeah, you definitely, seven is not the, the smallest number you can right. set on days to expiration. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. SPY, SPX, you, you can actually get down to some funkiness. You get two days, probably. Yeah, so if you want to enter a three as expiration, it's going to choose, you know, very near-term expirations if that's, yep. you know, maybe you like to sell options immediately before expiration, you know, capture the theta. Yep. Um, will the RSI length ever be adjustable? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Depends if you guys want it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Totally. Yeah, this would be interesting to see, you know, this, this tool is, I think, one of the few things out there we can start to combine technical indicators um, with options trading. So it's kind of a cool space we're entering into. And so we'll just be gauging how, how excited our users are to keep building out the, the technical uh, functionality. Yeah. Um, can I open after certain days after the close of a recent trade? Um, not yet but it's a, it's a perfectly good idea. Um, what option prices are used? This is something I think we, we answered. He says, is it a mid of the bid ask spread? So you can, you can set that in the settings here in the top. Yep. As if you're showed before. Um, is there a particular time of day for entry and exiting the options? End of day or 15 minutes before end of day. Yep. Let's see, short interest question. Yeah, so I think we're, uh, there's, there's still a lot of questions that we haven't clicked on, but we're starting to see a lot of the ones that we've already answered. Um, I'll scroll down to the bottom and see if there's any new ones that came in. Um, yeah, unusual volume, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, thanks for the great webinar. Thank you for joining us. Um, great work, great work, guys. Um, yeah, I think, I think we've done a pretty good job of, of getting to most of these. Uh, we'll try to read through and, um, and respond to anything if we know the users. Yeah, more Fibonacci interest. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we've done a pretty good job. All right. All right. Um, I'll just show one last thing again. Um, just to show the power of kind of how valuable it is to avoid a trade when the stock is moving in the wrong direction, whatever that direction is you want, uh, whether that means volatile, not volatile, up or down. Um, again, this is our SPY trade, which has 22 wins and three losses, yet it's down 53% in two years. Right? So think about that. 25 trades. Just remember that number, 25 trades. Okay. When we go to the technical open and say, look, I love this trade. It's fine if the, stock, if the SPY goes down. SPY can actually go down quite a bit. It's when the SPY falls apart that this becomes a problem. So we throw on a few of these technical requirements, which I showed in the video, and put it on a 50% loser with 25 trades becomes a 219% winner. And what happened, right? There's 25 trades, we just, we just skipped seven trades. That's all that happened. That's the value of a safety valve, right? That's why you want it. That's why it's so important. That's why we're so excited about this update. This works for all things, not just things are going up or down or volatile. Just, just, show, just remember that even with moving averages, you now have um, incredible strength to add some, uh, let's say security to the trades that you're placing to know that the entire market isn't going to mess your trade up, hopefully. Uh, and the, these safety valves are so powerful that even in the S&P 500, we're looking at like 270% better returns in just two years. So just, just keep that in mind. That's how powerful this can be. So please 
try, try to make use of it. I want you guys to, I want everyone to be successful. Great. Um, we have questions about more filters for price movement, like if the stock goes down for six or seven trading sessions. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think that, that's cool. We've also had people just out, just ask questions about what if the stock just gaps and I want to trade it immediately after a gap or like if it just has a 4% move on the day and I want to trade it. Um, yeah. We do do that kind of analysis. We have some machine learning models that are used for the mammoth, uh, the bull and bear mammoth. And so we do look at that price movement and that kind of stuff with that specific uh, technical that we've created using machine learning. Um, and I think we'd be open to putting that in the tool if, uh, if we get enough interest from users. Yeah. We also have a version of that in custom earnings, right? Stock moves up or down 5% on earnings. So we're, we're kind of dancing around it anyway. Yeah, good point. Um, Richard asks, do you find that very liquid ETFs are not very profitable with these strategies such as SPX? Uh, well, SPX is an index, SPY is the ETF. I think we've shown that this is remarkably profitable. So bear market, four wins, no losses, um, 10 years, this is going to be a long back test. I apologize, but it's, this is like checking a billion rows. Um, no, I think the ETFs are great to trade. Um, I did this SPY trade. Um, I got crushed on it, uh, which is fine um, because I wasn't using technicals and I did it during this time frame. right? 68 wins, 10 losses over 10 years. Yeah, I, I like it. Now I have a technical, now I have a technical safety valve. I'm going to do it again. Now, the S&P is not going to meet these requirements for a while, but when it does, I'm going to get back in. So yeah, I think ETFs are great. I think selling volatility ETFs can be great. I just think that you need to have um, really thorough testing. In other words, I think you need Trade Machine to figure out what's going on. I wouldn't just sell vol in ETFs. Yeah, I mean, what, what Ophir just put on the screen, I mean, that's some pretty powerful stuff that we're seeing right there. And we're seeing a, like a, a unique four-legged spread being tested over a 10 year time frame with four different technical, you know, uh, indicators needing to be triggered. You know, it's looking at 78 different trades. Um, that's starting to be some pretty serious, uh, some pretty serious tools. So I'm, I'm excited to get in there and start using some of these new features myself. Yeah. The institutions don't have this just so you guys know, I can let you know right now. They wish they could, they wish they could do this. Yeah, and we know because we've we've sat in front of a lot of those guys and had them ask for features for you know the databases that we were building out for them. Yeah, not too long ago. Yep. Okay, let's see here. Um, I don't know much about technical trading, but don't the 50-day moving averages change based on daily, weekly, monthly? Which does Trade Machine use? Not so, uh, the 50-day moving average is always using the daily. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so this can be a cool entry point for people to start, you know, there, there's different opinions on the technical stuff. I think uh, we've seen, not just through the examples that we've shown, but also some, sort of the more extensive backtesting that we do. Um, some of these things really do matter and they really do have a positive effect on the results. So, uh, you know, some technical analysis can get pretty deep um, and pretty specific, but some of these high level things are actually quite useful. So this is a great way to, to get an introduction into it. Um, so we have the other question, do these work better on stocks than ETFs? Okay, that was already answered. Okay, for Tesla, this is someone who's been with us for a little while. For Tesla, do you still use days before production volume report rather than earnings? I'll tell you that right now. Put in Tesla for a back test and there you go, your note. So we're back to earnings dates because people wanted their earnings dates, even though there might have been more movement on the other, uh, the other day. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, yeah, so we're back to the actual earnings date, just to answer the question fully. Every time you put Tesla in, you're going to get this pop-up just because we rightfully didn't want to confuse people. I mean, yeah. yeah, so we have, how do you set alerts for a custom back test trigger? How do I set alerts for custom back test trigger? Yeah. So, um, well, custom back test trigger, I mean, you can set alerts for all of these and we're going to start adding um, all of the technical triggers. Basically, that's our next thing. I mean, we, we're not even going to pull on it. If it's in the product, we need to make alerts for it. So that's coming soon. So soon enough, you'll start seeing these drop downs with, you know, stock crosses through the 200 day moving average, stock is above the 50 day moving average, and you can start adding them, email or text or both.
Yeah. And it's interesting to think about when it comes time to make the trade, you might have some fancy iron condor strategy around earnings that you trade. Um, but the information that you really need to know if you're, for instance, going to, you want to buy this thing six days before earnings, you know, it's, it, you'll be placing the trade. So you can go test, test what the return is up to that point. What the tool will do right now is say like, Hey, it's six days before earnings. You can go check to see if you want to put that trade on or yeah. not. Yeah, use this notes thing too. It's actually super helpful. I've set a lot of alerts and I didn't put notes and I had no idea what I was doing. I started typing myself notes in here and it just was just so much more powerful. Uh, it just, just take the 10 seconds to write the notes. It's worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely concur with that. So, yeah, so I mean, said, if you start trading 30 or 40 stocks, it's, you know, you remembering gotta, that you had a great idea. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. Like, what, what was that again? Uh, so this is my LinkedIn, uh, just one of my recent posts, just to show you that like Goldie's watching, BMO's watching, Bloomberg's watching. You guys, you guys are getting the tools they wish they had, and they're going to try and copy us. This is this is legitimately my LinkedIn. I'm just showing it to you right now. And this is not who looked at my profile, guys. This is who looked at our posts, not my profile. Okay. Um, Daniel asked uh, one more time. Can you say the difference between mid market and halfway? Today? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, um, market price is buying on the offer, on the ask, and selling on the bid. Mid-market would be halfway in between, right? So the, it would be the average. Halfway between mid and market is halfway between that average and the market price. So you could think of it as like a 75-25 weighting. A little bit pessimistic, but not as bad as the... Um, by market orders. Yeah, that's great. Um, Steve says, at some point, can you come out with a video showing more on how to use the stock back tests for uh, for trading stocks? Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. I will. Yes. Totally. Yeah, this kind of evolved into sort of as an options back tester, and people are using it more and more for stocks. So we started adding more and more stock features. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of people saying thanks and happy new year. So thanks to all of you and happy new year to all of you guys. Um, he said, how do I save my search results for an alert? Yeah. So using the notes that Ophir was mentioning, that's actually a really good way to do it is you can share a trade. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you go into like, yeah, the back test or whatever, you can create a trade, click the share button, copy that trade, and send it to yourself on a note, and now you have your highly customized back test with it, a nice way that it saves it, and it sends it immediately to you. Right. That's a really powerful feature. We would like to add, we'll try to do this so to save you the step. So this is a way, like, hey, seven days before earnings, send me this trade. Um, what we will do in the not too distant future is to just add, just have a button on this page that says add this alert for like an earnings alert or something like that. Um, we haven't done it yet, but we'll try to do that soon. But with what Ophir just showed, you can you can click the share link and send the alert to yourself at the right time. So it takes one extra step, but it's a really powerful way to send yourself an alert. Yep. Here's a proof. I'm pasting that long URL. It's going to open a fresh window, and it's going to be the SPY trade. There it is. Yeah, even with all that, I mean, that's a that's a powerful trade right there. And just, yeah, so it's oh. four technicals and four legs and custom strategies, and it's all. Yeah, that's no joke. Um, great. <laughs> we're asking for an opinion. Is it still a good time to buy in BTA? I don't think we're <laughs> going to get into that on this one. Um, Gen January 3rd. <laughs> That's the CMO Pro webinar. Um, happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, where do I share? So maybe we can slow that down and show it one more time. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, if you click this, like these two sheets of paper that gives the URL and you can copy it and share it. Uh, like on Twitter, you could also just click like the Twitter button and then it'll say capital market laboratories, you know, so whatever you want or Facebook. Um, uh, so that, that's how you get it. Also, this is a good training. Um, if you have a question about a back test uh, and you want support to help, we're just going to get back to you and say, can you send us a, a, the link to your back test? So it'll just make it faster for you, more satisfying for you to share the link to your back test so we can look at it and see what's going on. Yeah. And it just, you know, just say the obvious, um, you know, it really helps us if you can, if you can, if you like the tool and it's doing well for you to share it with your community. Um, as we start to kind of build out a bigger audience, it lets us do things like add futures and, and do things that are, 
you know, would be price prohibitive with a small group of people, but as that larger group uh, builds up, as you share the tool and share it with people that you know, um, not only does it help them if you like the tool, um, but it lets us do a lot of the cool stuff that we really want to do. Um, so, you know, it really helps us if you can, uh, if you can help uh, spread the word and the share is, is a great way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And anyone that you share that link with would also of course, enjoy the, uh, the sort of last couple days of the, of the pricing before it goes up. Um, James asked, how much does it cost per month? Um, this is the last chance to get it at $89 per month. Um, it will be 149 after that. Um, we may run a promotion at some point in the future, but it will probably, you'll probably never see that price of $89 a month again. Uh, I'm officially, I'm, I'm officially retiring 89. Yeah. So that's that. Um, let's see. Um, thanks, thanks, thanks. Um, is this an upgrade to existing users members? It's a free upgrade to all existing users and members. And that's how we, that's how we do things around here. Oh yeah. Is yeah. Member? Same price. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. No, yeah. If you're a member, you get every upgrade and you get every upgrade with no price increase ever. Just because someone else is paying $500 a month doesn't mean you are. You're going to pay whatever you're paying unless you cancel. <laughs> so. um, we have a question. Does the share link expire after some time? Generally not. But um, what can happen is if you change the name of a strategy or something, it's if you have a custom strategy and then you change the strategy, Oh yeah. that can, then we can't find it. So we don't know what to share anymore. So yeah, if I were to change the name of this strategy, which I made and just, I don't know, deleted the word put or something, then everyone who had this old link is going to be looking for a strategy that doesn't exist anymore. But if you're not using, so if you don't change the name, that's fine. But also if you're using just standard strategies, yeah, they, they don't, they don't expire. Yeah. That, that those shouldn't expire. If, if for some reason you see one not come up, uh, let us know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, those, those should all be permanent. Um, great. Um, more, does it work well with ETFs that are covering fixed income or currency or commodities? Yeah, like HYG. I think it could. Just make sure. Here's the, is one trick about ETFs. There's like 14 of them or something that are actually tradable, and the other 5,000 you can't trade. They're like no bid at $5. So just make sure you're dealing with ETFs that are actually tradable. But yeah, yeah, I think so. Yep, absolutely. Uh, like the T's. Yeah, you could use the T's, stuff like that. Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Thank you. Great. Um, Richard says he hasn't heard much about the Mammoth filter recently. Yeah, that's, uh, that's still a great machine learning algorithm that's running. Um, yeah, we might start sending out some more articles and stuff about that. Yeah, do you guys want us to? It's a small poll. Yeah, yeah you guys want more, uh, more of the Mammoth filter, the machine learning algorithm? I guess we'll see. Look at that. Great. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a research product called a CML Pro. Um, can that be combined? Um, we don't have a way of combining those right now. Um, one is a long-term research product that's focused on sort of more of a buy and hold strategy for stocks based on huge technology trends. Uh, it's a super great service and pr pretty different than the, the option back tester. Uh, we definitely appreciate the fact that you're set up for both. So far, we've never created some kind of combined pricing, um, but who knows in the future. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the webinar. Helmut says you can see it going to 500. Yeah, I think it probably will. Yeah. When VIX is elevated, is there a risk of volatility collapse and long options losing value? Do you provide a way of quantifying this? Um. Well, options will always go down in value, all things being equal because of decay. Uh, higher volatility means there's more to decay. Um, you know, there's some pretty interesting studies. A guy named John that it was with me was a, a market maker, and he had this, just some great stats on when the VIX crosses 30, how long it takes for it to finally get back below 20. You should do some of that research, like just go download some data. It surprised you. Doesn't go down as fast as you think it will once it gets really, really, really elevated. Not kind of elevated. I mean, like panic elevated. So, it, but I mean, yeah. I mean, certainly the the more vol you're buying, you you know, you need a lot more stock movement in order for your strategies to win. 
and vice versa. If you're selling it, then you need, you know, you have a lot more protection. But having said that, when there's elevated vol, you have days when you're, you know, down a thousand points or up a thousand points. So that all works out in the averages, like I think. Definitely. Okay, guys, I think we can we can wind up there. Maybe Ophir, you'll just put that uh, link up one more time for the uh, new people here. Sure. Yeah. Hi, thanks guys. everyone for attending. Yeah, I hope I hope you guys love it. Um, I love it. I hope um, you know. I'll let you, we'll let you use it for a couple of weeks, and then we'll pull you and see how we can make it even better. But thanks so much for uh, giving us the ideas. I actually had no idea how valuable it would be to tell you the truth. I was excited about it, but when I started looking at some of the strategies and the safety valves, I I was blown away. So I'm I'm chomping at the bit to trade. Um, so thank you know thank you for uh, for your imagination. Yep, absolutely. James says uh, he's never going to cancel. <laughs> Thanks, James. We'll, we'll be here for you. Thanks yeah. for supporting us. Um, yeah, help us spread the word. And thanks, everyone. Happy holidays. Um, hope you guys have a great start to your new year and a great safe night uh, this evening. Enjoy the time with your friends and families and stay safe. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll look forward to getting your feedback on this feature and new stuff in the future. And we'll just leave this up for uh, the next couple of minutes. But thanks once again, and we'll definitely get another – webinar going in the near future so we can all get together and, uh, and keep benefiting from all your guys great ideas yes thank you so much for time guys thanks for your ideas happy new year please be safe see you in 2019 all right guys happy new year